Hello, I hope you're doing well, staying healthy, staying safe. So, in the present times when health and well-being are the most discussed topics in healthcare systems, are the most stressed and strained systems worldwide, what would you say if I asked? What is the most substantial change you anticipate in your country's healthcare systems over the next decade? What will the future of healthcare be in the next 10 years? I would assert it is the digital healthcare revolution, digital and distant care is the future of healthcare. Let's deep dive. I am Dr. Yoshna Jain from India, currently residing in Germany, having spent most of the pandemic time in Germany while being very closely connected to India via digital technologies. So, Digital health is a popular topic and a buzzword in the business world these days. However, today I'm not going to talk about technological or business aspects related to digital health. On the contrary, I want to share my independent and personal views on three areas of digital health that I find hugely interesting. I refer to them as the three E's of digital health. Number one, equity, health equity. Number two, e-patient or empowered patient. And number three, very close to my heart, entrepreneurship in digital health. And um, I will tell you my perspective and my story is related to these threes of digital health. First of all, what is digital health? Simply put, digital health is defined as the use of information and communication technology in support of health and health related fields. It has a multitude of applications. However, what I'm going to touch upon today are only those solutions and services that directly impact the life of patients. For example, telemedicine. All of you must have heard of this terminology, must have used it during these times. It is something that enables uh, the healthcare professionals and the patients to connect remotely. Then um, electronic health record systems that uh, uh, that converts the paper-based document management to a more efficient electronic medical records management. Um, then e-commerce. E-commerce in healthcare, um, all of you may have again used it. Uh, this includes, uh, this broadly includes diagnostics, medicine or medical equipment, delivery and services at your doorstep with just a few clicks. Then comes variables technology. Yes, I think it is a revolution that we wear in the form of smartwatches and fitness trackers to take better control of our health. And uh, last but not the least, mobile health technology. That is, again, a very broad area. But here, I'm specifically referring to uh, the smartphone-based education and awareness programs that is leading towards e-patients. So, the first E, that is health equity. As we know, um, more often than not, technology and innovation benefit the privileged. And that's why we see five and seven star hospitals in cities like Delhi and Mumbai, and we see wealthy people worldwide using wearables and taking better control of their health and well-being. But I will give you some small yet practical use cases of digital health that have the potential and are actually transforming lives in far remote locations. The biggest example is the use of telemedicine across the world, including India, that has increased dramatically during the COVID times. You all would agree that COVID, COVID um, wreaked havoc on the world. But one thing which probably happened for good is that this pandemic pushed and accelerated our civilization to adopt digital technology, especially digital health. Today, um, consumers and physicians alike recognize the critical role of digital health because they saw in front of their eyes during this pandemic how, how digital health made a huge contribution in responding to this COVID crisis in areas ranging from surveillance to tracking to risk communication to diagnosis and of course treatment. 
So um, this telemedicine revolution in particular helped in delivering care to the patients in the remotest locations while keeping both uh, patients and the doctors or the healthcare providers safe from the COVID exposure. Now with its success and growing acceptance during these times, it has become a strong tool to improve health equity. And given this fact, I can't see why, why we can't make medical consultation available in the remotest areas. Look at this. What do we need to deploy telemedicine? All we need is a small um, telebooth with a computer, with uh, an internet connection, some vital uh, medical diagnostic uh, devices that are readily available today, connected to a central consultation uh, center 24 seven or whatever time period you want to give the services for. And imagine one consultation center serving a large geographical area. Of course, of course, uh, telemedicine will not and cannot cover the emergency cases, surgery, trauma, etc. But matter of the fact is that almost as per my experience, more than 40% primary consultation cases require basic medical advice, triaging or follow up, for example, in the case of chronic conditions. So, if telemedicine can cover these, imagine, imagine the load it reduces off the healthcare system, the travel time, the waiting time and the money that is saved at both the patient and the provider's end. As a disclaimer, <clears throat> I would like to add here that this idea is definitely not a replacement for the vision of a primary care center in each and every village, but it is actually a vision to utilize this promising tool of digital health to bring high quality medical care at the doorsteps of a villager. I hope you agree. Besides, um, not only villages, but even in towns and cities, there's a huge demand for remote care. For example, in India, where um, as per the 2020 uh, Red Sea Analysis Report, currently we have nine beds per 10,000 patients that is far below the WHO mandated standard of 40 beds per 10,000 patients. So we can see the need. Another small yet powerful use case I want to share is related to my mother who um, before retiring worked for 35 years in integrated child development scheme uh, run by UNESCO in India. So uh, this scheme is actually one of the world's largest early childhood development programs and um, it's actually India's response to address the early age malnutrition, morbidity and mortality related issues. During my childhood, I have seen my mother making visits to uh, villages for um, you know, inspection of these Anganwadi centers, maintaining paper records for the vaccination, weight, height, nutrition, etc. of the children and pregnant women. Now, last year, casually when I asked her, you know, how's the office, how's the ways of working in your department and all those things and I was surprised, I was surprised to know that now they are using a variety of digital health technologies, including smartphone based apps for education, awareness campaigns, video call with Anganwadis, other beneficiaries, uh, they are tracking, sharing internal data, maintaining vaccination stocks linked to logistic management and whatnot. Bingo! It is such a pleasant surprise, I said. We are getting digital too, my mom said. So, what I want to emphasize is that the digital transformation of health systems is not about developing a rip and replace killer app that will eliminate health inequity forever. Indeed, it is about systematic, incremental, and often unseen ways in which these tools and techniques may help individuals and healthcare systems around the world in the attempts to eradicate health inequality. And alongside, it brings so many intangible, immense intangible benefits to the system, 
that include better reach, transparency, traceability, reduced inefficiencies and optimum resource utilization. So, it is no surprise that today not only private players but governments of various countries, global health organizations like WHO, they are working on the strategy, guidelines, execution and implementation of digital health programs. So, what do you think? Isn't it a revolution? And showing us that digital and distant care is the future of healthcare. Definitely. Now coming to the second E, the concept of e-patients. Yes, this is a published term. I haven't made it by myself. By definition, e-patients are those individuals who fully participate in the medical care. Here the E may stand for electronic, equipped, enabled, empowered, engaged or expert. Yes, expert. So uh, let me share my small story. As a child, I was very inquisitive as most of the children are and I used to ask a lot of questions to everyone. My parents were no less inquisitive and we were teeming with a lot of questions for everyone including the carpenter, shopkeeper, driver, sabzi wala, dudh wala and practically everyone. But there was one type of individual we hardly asked or questioned anything about and I was pre-warned not to ask him any questions. This person unquestionably was the doctor. Yes. Now it was a respect, blind faith, lack of knowledge or a mix of all but that was the situation for many of us. I believe not only for me and my family. However, the times have drastically changed now. Today, after Years of experience and exposure to healthcare systems in different countries, one change I can definitely vouch for is the emergence and rapid progression of e-patient, electronic or empowered patients paradigm. Every hand has a mobile. Many of these mobiles have access to a fast internet, ensuring access to an explosive amount of information. Yes, admittedly, a lot of this information is junk and unreliable and I think here it's a moot point, but nobody can question the reach of the internet and its mostly positive impact on healthcare. The way I see it, I believe that digital health empowers today's patients to be curious and hence search, read and share medical and health information with family, friends and doctors and most importantly ask questions, track their health, their health data and take control and charge of their health. Patients nowadays have formed uh, disease related communities and groups and are exchanging information. There are even examples of e-patients who by self-study have become better informed on specific topics and even surprise their doctors. Yes, and these, and these are called expert patients. So, um, this entire trend, this entire trend, I believe is favorably changing the fulcrum of patient-doctor relationship towards a better, towards patient-centered care. And believe me, this is the need of the hour. Because given the increasing uh, prevalence of chronic and non-communicable diseases, and of course, the global impact of viral and infectious diseases, we need the tools to empower our population, to run awareness campaigns, especially in resource constrained settings. We, we have to make them more informed, make, enable them to make the right lifestyle choices, be medication compliant and all that. But yes, one disclaimer here, please remember, um, e-patient doesn't mean self-diagnosis or self-medication. Information from internet or someone else's experience is never, never a replacement for medical consultation. Now, coming to the third E of today's talk, entrepreneurship in digital health, a topic very close to my heart. So, According to a June 21 report from uh, Statista Research Department, the global digital health market was worth an estimated 
175 billion uh, US dollar in 2019, which is expected to reach nearly 660 billion dollars by 2025, with an expected CAGR of almost 25 percent. As an entrepreneur in this domain, these developments are absolutely motivating. However, I think this domain, like rest all techno-driven domains, is full of technocrats. But I'm not a techie. I'm a healthcare professional. And my passion for digital health stems from the firm belief that technology can help reduce global health inequities and make quality healthcare accessible to even the most remotest areas and the marginalized communities. So, from this reputed platform, one point I want to convey, indeed an appeal, is to more and more healthcare professionals and especially women thinkers and entrepreneurs to enter the digital health domain. Why? Because we need we need these voices driven by vision to make a difference to society and not just for the pursuit of business profits. We not only need technologists, AI experts and blockchain experts to enter this area, but those who are closer and understand the pain points of the system and the patients. We need companies to build solutions, not only for the wealthy who can afford expensive smart watches, but also companies who can build simple yet effective solutions to improve the quality of healthcare and make it affordable, available and accessible for the most disadvantaged and underserved populations living in the remotest locations. Coming from a small town of hilly state Uttarakhand in India, I wish for a future in which the life of a villager living in the harshest environmental conditions becomes a little easier. I wish she doesn't have to travel miles, does not need to run between one hospital to another, carrying her kids along with a thick file of medical records while struggling with language barriers. At the end, I would just say that this massive tectonic shift taking place in healthcare towards adopting the far-reaching benefits of digital healthcare will be worthwhile only if we can leverage all these advancements and benefits to provide the last mile healthcare to the underprivileged, underserved, marginalized and remote populations. Thank you so much for listening to me today.